On May 1st, 2012, Film Courage attended a press roundtable interview with director Patricia Riggin for the film Girl in Progress. This audio is from that interview session. For more information on Girl in Progress, please visit girlinprogressmovie.com. Well, with uh, Under the Same Moon and this movie... I see kind of a nice little trend going. In other words, every director has a trademark type of film that they make. So do you feel like that's happening with you now? I like to, yes. I, I think it's different and it has a lot of similarities, you know, because now it's, it's still a mom and a kid, right? But they're, they're living in the same house, but they're separated. So in a way, that's a, okay. similar to under the same moon. And how are we going to get these two together? And if, if I have a trademark, it's probably that I like family and I like people discovering the goodness in characters and helping them come together. I like that. It's, I think I heard, you know, because we've been screening the movie to women of all ages and they're really responding to, to that connection. And um, the movie is um, provoking communication between moms and daughters. And, that's a really good thing. Really but on, good thing. on that discovering the goodness in characters, because um, uh, Ava had an interesting thing to say about how she, did, there were things about race she didn't like, and we very rarely hear the actors judge their characters, because they say that that's a, up to us, they, 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 they play them mm -hmm. through their eyes. But the, uh, it made me wonder how far you feel like you can push people, because you, you do meet her as a pretty bad mother, mm -hmm. uh, not, not a terrific mm -hmm. example of, mm -hmm. of, of a nurturing person, mm -hmm. and, and you wonder how far can you push the audience mm -hmm. before you draw them back in to be on her side. I know, I think, you know, I think like Eva did a great job in, in the, um, bringing the humanity of the character, because she's terribly flawed as a mom, but she's also very likable, and I think we see her making mistakes, but we also understand that she's trying to do her best. She was a young mom herself, you know, and, and the character got pregnant when she was 17. And now she has a teen daughter and she doesn't know how to be a mom. So I think the key for me was to understand the character from that other side. You know, I, I brought that little backstory there, you know, when we understand that she was 17 when she had her and she was kicked out of the house. So she's trying to provide, she has two jobs, she's killing herself. And she's neglecting her daughter emotionally, I guess, you know, and that's what she comes to learn. But it's a fine line, and I think she did a terrific job yeah. allowing us to like her, despite the fact that we're seeing her make so many mistakes. Well, that, that was interesting, because there was a line in there about, you know, for her character, the, 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 the wives in the restaurant hate her. Um, and and I she can... has the, the thing open, you know, I, actually the scene continues, like, should I put this up? Yeah. Us? <laughs> And, and, you know, I feel like it was, you know, she's been called upon to, to use a lot of her charm in the bigger studio movies. But mm -hmm. what made you see that, that deeper quality that where her charm was going to sort of keep that character viable for the audience, but mm -hmm. she was also going to dig into mm -hmm. the more dramatic elements? I think she, she wanted to do this very bad. She read this, this character and she saw me, the character, where she could really show that other side of her. And she... She's such a beautiful, glamorous girl, and she knows that about herself, and she was very conscious of keeping herself real every single moment, even more her than me. She knew that she had to keep her looks, you know, she's a working class girl, she has two jobs, she doesn't have time, and, and she said, but we need to be very careful, don't, don't, don't put anything that, you know, it's going to strike that other... Uh, other character that I've played, you know, this is a real girl. She would ask me, do I look bad? I'm like, yeah. She's like, yes. You know, she just kept it real. And I think that's allowing women, females, to connect with this character. Because it's not, you know, the glamorous girl. It's the working girl that's really just trying. What was your hardest scene that you did? The one that you, that you were kind of, um, I guess if we're all the same, we kind of have a feeling about that certain scene. Well, boy, when I get that one over, I'll, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. just, which, what was yours? Or maybe there I think definitely the bullying scene. You know, I, have, I work with Rainy. Rodriguez, and um, she's in the middle of the cafeteria, right? She's, it's all full of kids, and, and this girl is going to yell at her, you know, all these awful things. And I, I knew it was going to be very hard. I, 
her father was there, she was there, and we're talking real human beings here. We're not, you know, it's just a real girl. And I was going to put her through that moment, even if it's acting, she's going to live that moment. So I kept the, the mean girls, I said, to, you know, to not really let it out till we were really going to shoot that moment, you know, so I wouldn't expose her so much. But Rainy is so graceful and so self-confident and so beautiful inside and out that she just made it very easy for me. But that was the hard one for me. What was about Sierra got you to get mm -hmm. her into the role and her chemistry with Amy? Well, first of all, Sierra had never acted in a movie. So I didn't have that actor ready. You know, she didn't have the chops. She didn't have the training. But uh, she sent me a tape when she was 11 years old singing at the Apollo Theater like Aretha Franklin and having everybody ah, raving on. And I thought, <laughs> oh my God, this little girl, you know, the courage. This is ansiedad for sure. Uh, I don't know if she can act, but she can definitely put on a show. And, um, and I thought, you know, I want to choose a girl that I want to see for two hours, that I want to fall in love for two hours, and took it upon myself to help her through, you know, this very complex performance. But I knew I had a girl that I just wanted to watch for two hours. That's what I think makes a difference between just a good actor and a star. How do you strike that balance between hitting those universal themes that anybody can relate to, and then also telling a story that has specific details for the American Latina? Mm -hmm. um, I concentrate first and foremost, as you say, in the human experience, and in this case, the female experience, and giving them, you know, just very rounded characters, traits, flaws, virtues. And, um, and then I don't push the Latina aspect because... I am Latina, so it just comes out really natural. When you go into the details of what they eat and what they hear, that's when the culture, the richness of the culture comes in and makes it very specific. But the experience is the human experience, is the female experience. So I always thought this is a movie for the general audience. It's for, for females of all ages. Um, and then they just happen to be Latinas. And I like that I said it in Seattle and not in a border state because we're used, so used to the Latinas in the borders. These are just two American girls, you know, they're over there, they're living their life, they're struggling like, like so many others. So it could really be about any culture, any race. But there are specific things in it, like when she, the daughter says, don't be such an immigrant, like there's that tension between, and then is that Banda music they play at the party? Mm -hmm. It's like Banda, which you never hear in, in a lot of films. Mm -hmm. So what was your take on that and building all that together? Because I know what these households are like, and I know what uh -huh. they hear. And um, so I always like to incorporate, for example, music into the movies, not just add it on later on, but really incorporate it. And since, you know, this was a Mexican immigrant, Mission Impossible, so in his house, they're, they're listening to Banda. And in fact, I have the biggest, right now, the biggest star, like the biggest singer. That's the guy that's singing. He oh, yeah. is huge. He's like superstar. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, and I brought him to play an immigrant. You know, the next morning, he's, you know, he's dressed in his work, you know, <laughs> uniform, going to work in Starbucks, you know. And that's the, that's the reality. I like that the movie is, in a way, it's a, a reflection of our society. Movies normally are Hispanic, all Hispanic. Hollywood, all Hollywood. This we're combining, you know, the the Hollywood cast with the with the Latin cast into one movie because that's just how we live today. You always get managed to get the biggest of the big Latino stars mm -hmm. in your your movies. So mm -hmm. are you kind of like the lady now to kind of yeah. romance and? Mm -hmm. Definitely. They, they send me messages because, you know, Eugenio Derbez, who plays Mission Impossible, is the biggest yeah, just TV him, yeah. comedian of all times from Latin America. And I gave him his first film role and his first dramatic role and his first time in Hollywood. And he did a very good job. I mean, he did an excellent job as, as that guy in, in Under the Same Moon. And studio executives asking me, you know, um, he could do comedy. He's a real good actor. I mean, he could do comedy. He's a comedian, you know. They didn't even notice that. So I brought him back. I think he's, he's very charismatic and certainly helpful to bring us that other audience, too. 
Yeah. I think, um, I don't know, it seems to me that more bullies um, have been portrayed as with boys. It's more of a boy theme, boy nerd, boy mm -hmm. this or that. But it's interesting, and I think it's good awareness for girls, because I think young teenage girls mm -hmm. have such self-esteem issues, right? Mm -hmm. And you've been catering. Is that yeah. true? It was, you know, the bullying... Um, subject matter, it's at the heart of Ansiedad's story. You know, her coming of age is realizing what, you know, how words can affect people and how bullying can, can hurt someone's life so deeply, you know. Um, we see that all the time in society. So I like that that's at the heart of her own coming of age story. This is, it's, it's a movie where all the characters are going through changes, through coming of age moments. Who did you look at besides Eva Mendez, or was she the only one? What was your spectrum of actresses for that role? Well, there's not a long list, you know. There's, exactly. There's the, the, because they, the studio executives, they want someone that means something in Hollywood, mm -hmm. right? So there's not too many out there, but I think in could this be case... Jennifer Lopez, right? Could be Jennifer. I mean, could be... Salma? Salma... Although Salma is Mexican, so, you know, we wanted an American, an American girl right. okay. with that, you know, American accent. She's just an so American if she, girl. if she hadn't signed on, would it have been made? Like, do you think? I think, I think it was a very great character for mm -hmm. any of those girls. So if it wasn't Eva, hopefully someone else would have come on board. Thankfully, I did a, a movie that was very successful, La Misma Luna, so it showed that I really care about actors, and I love mm -hmm. performances, and I, I work with them to give them good moments. Her comedic timing is so awesome, and it's like, did you, did you have to adjust that at all, or no, were you... I mean, she's just very good. I, you know, I, I discovered a lot about Eva in the process, because we don't get to audition this girl, you know, you mm -hmm. cast them. And she, you know, I saw every movie she had done, so mm -hmm. I could learn about her, but most of her roles were, you know, in a way similar. She was very glam and very beautiful playing that role, but she had, I hadn't seen her real, you know, like real, pretty, pretty you know, down to earth, working class girl. And I was so blessed that she, she has a great commit. she's very funny, and she also has, you know, the drama. She's, she's a very, very good actress. Mm -hmm. I think another of the I themes that uh, uh, both Grace and Ansiedad have to deal with is, is understanding the consequences of your choices. And I felt that the bedroom scene uh, with, is it Trevor, is that the, is the boy's <laughs> yes. name? Uh, aside from the fact that there's a lot of comedy in it, there's also, I mean, the daddy in me was saying, get up, get out, of, don't do that. And, and, and so it's a, I thought there was a scene that required a lot of, of again, fine tightrope walking. Yeah. Talk a bit about that. Did you try it different ways or have it? You know, I was, uh, her parents were there, you know, that's, those are the, another one, the very tricky scene, you know, and she's a young girl, she hasn't had any of these experiences, so I was very conscious and very careful of, of not exploiting the girl, not exploiting what I know works out there in the media, which is, could be, you know, more sexual, more out there, showing more we don't need that. It's all about what's really happening underneath. And so I, I made, you know, she takes her underwear under the covers. And it just, I think if you work from your heart, it just, it just all happens. And one thing I'm discovering is that the movie's being embraced by families. And, um, and um, I mean, I think it has to do with the way we deal or I deal with very strong subject matters. We're in a very elegant way, subtle way, because we don't need to show more to say what we need to say. You say I you wanted the movie to be seen by kids. You know, when I got the script at the beginning, it was an R-rated script, and I thought, I don't want to make a movie that girls cannot watch. This is a movie about girls. I want girls to be able to watch it. So I adjusted everything to be able to open it for them. So you said you were looking specifically for an American who would have the American accent. So do you think the movie will play in Spanish-speaking countries? Um, I'm hoping, you know. I think this is, a, this is a, a tricky movie. It's not clear, you know, because we think it's Latina, because it has Latinas, but it's very general. Um, but, you know, we have a, a Eugenio and Espinosa, who are huge Mexican and Latin American stars. So that will help us, you know, put it out there. Um, 
And it's really about the female experience. I think, I think single moms are out there everywhere in every society. And the struggles that single moms face about, you know, young pregnancy is present in all members, you know, of communities in our society. And the movie is also, you know, tackling that very important subject matter. So I, I'm hoping that it plays everywhere. If we do well here, it'll play more. And um, I think we're lucky we got the Mother's Day weekend. It's, yeah. a, it's a movie that speaks to females, to moms and daughters. And I'm hoping that that's their, their movie of choice that weekend. We're the only movie, only female movie on Mother's Day weekend. Don't see the Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love the Avengers. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much.